after I failed my first architecture exam, I literally went into my car and I Googled, I just failed the ARE. And I felt at that point this overwhelming like defeat and I didn't know what the next steps were. And when I Googled that, there wasn't a ton of information that helped me figure out what that next step was was. I think there was like one or two articles, which was great. And of course I knew logically that it wasn't going to be the end of the world. Like it would be okay. But in that moment, it felt so frustrating. It felt embarrassing. It felt like, what am I even doing? I just spent so much time and energy coming in to take this exam, to study, to prepare for it. And across the screen, I see a big likely fail. And it wasn't even just the amount of work that I put into prepping for it or sitting there for a three hour exam. It was now the idea that I had to do it all again. And that was one of the biggest things that felt so overwhelming and that I had to now go home and tell my husband and my friends and my family that I had just failed. There were so many different emotions that came up and that is why I am now here doing what I'm doing. When I first Googled that and I didn't have the resources that I needed, I knew that when I was done with the exams, I needed to share my story. I needed to help people like you who are going through the exams as well so that they don't feel alone so that they can get back to it quicker than I did because I felt so defeated that it took me six months to even start to want to get in there and take the exam again and I know for some people it can take years to get in there after a failed exam so that is why I came out with my very first video early March 2020 before I knew the whole world was going to slow down, I came out with a video about my ARE process and the realities of failing. And that video ended up taking off. And it has led me into having incredible conversations with people from all different paths of the exam process. It led to starting my programs and my courses to help make the process a little bit easier. And so today, I want to go back to that original intent, that original reason why this whole channel got started, this whole podcast got started. And that was to talk about the realities of fail, to make it a more known experience, and to give you some tips of what you can do if you find yourself sitting in your car or sitting in your room after you've taken your exam and you are trying to figure out and Google, I just failed the ARE. What do I do next? What are these next? steps. So that is what I'm going to go into today so that you can feel motivated. You can feel like, okay, I understand why this is happening and what I can do to prevent it in the future. All right, let's do it. Hey everyone, welcome to Design, Create, Inspire with me, Bryn Young. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for sitting with me as we talk through an often uncomfortable subject like failing the Aries, failing the exams. This is something that I never imagined I would find myself talking about as often as I do, but I realize how many people need it and it's something that I feel so passionate about because failing these exams really doesn't mean a whole lot. It means it does mean a lot. I'm going to explain what it means, but it doesn't mean that you're not a great architect. It doesn't mean you're not meant to do this. And so I want to consolidate a couple quick tips and ideas and resources to help you when you're going through this so that you can stay consistent, so that you don't feel defeated, and so that you can take the exams and pass and be become a licensed architect, right? Because the goal isn't just pass these exams. The goal is to become a licensed architect. And these exams are what you need to do to get there, but they're just one step of the way and they're something that you can totally do and get through. So first off, let's just be real about it. Failing the exams is such a common experience for so many architects. Once people are licensed, they're not gonna talk about their fails and honestly, I would say most 
architects probably don't even remember how many exams they failed. Even me, I talk about my experience all the time. I talk about failing the exams all the time. And still to this day, I have to like stop and think and be like, how many did I fail? Oh yeah, I did that one. Okay, that one, you know what I mean? But when you're in it, it can feel so monumental and so overwhelmingly heavy. So I just want to start off letting you know that it's such a common experience. You're not the only one. And one day it will feel so much smaller than it does feel right now. So let's just use basic statistics. According to NCARB, the last time they came out with their pass rates, the pass rate was an average of 55%. So, I mean, I talk about this before. If you haven't heard me talk about it, like this is such a great statistic to pay attention to because it's literally showing us that half of the people are failing. And I will say too, that that statistic isn't even totally, not totally accurate, but it doesn't really tell us the full story because people are included in that who have taken that exam before, right? So, you know, you could have taken it a thousand times, you know what I mean? You know, it's, that pass rate, people come from all different backgrounds, experiences, have taken exams before, all that kind of stuff. And it shows us that when you're going through the exams, there's six exams, you are likely, based on statistics, to fail at least one of those exams. Really, honestly, at least like two or three. And so when you go into the process knowing that this is the reality, it changes your expectations. Now, of course, it's important to go in with confidence and empowerment so that you can pass. However, when we go in with the expectation that, hey, not everyone passes on their first try, then if and when that does happen, then our expectations are, hey, okay, I already knew that this was a likely possibility. And because I already know it's a likely possibility, I already have steps in place in order to help me move forward for when that happens. And that's one of the biggest things that you can do that can help is you create a plan. There's world-class athletes that will create a plan for when something bad happens or for when something good happens. I once heard of this story about Michael Phelps and they would do visualizations about their swim meets and visualization for visualizing essentially what is going to happen can actually uh, change the outcome and your performance when you go into it. So Michael Phelps would visualize, do these activities exercises where he's visualizing winning his meets or matches or whatever you call them in swim. But he would also visualize when things would go wrong. So visualize something bad happen. I'm pretty sure I have to check in on the story, but I'm pretty sure he even visualized his nose cap thing like coming off or something like that. And then when he was in the meet, that ended up happening. But because he had visualized it before, he already had a plan of action of what to do when that happened so that it didn't totally defeat him. And he ended up winning like crazily, like, of course he would. But the idea is that say you don't create a plan, create a plan of action for something going wrong. When that happens, our brains can quickly go into defeat mode where we have already given up and we have already accepted a fail, even if it doesn't even mean a fail. So imagine Michael Phelps, he, you know, hadn't planned for anything like that. He had basically just planned for, I'm going to win. And then something like that happens where he loses the nose thing. I'm not a swimmer. <laughs> and in his mind, he goes, oh my gosh, I just lost this entire meet because that just happened. So what do you do? You basically, your body starts shutting down. You start swimming slower. You start just not really caring. Now the same thing could be for the exams. Say you get in there and your first three questions are questions that you literally have. You don't even know the words that they're asking. You're like, there's no, I did not even see this in my study material. So what we can do is if we haven't planned for that, we haven't created a plan of action, then what happens is that when that happens, we go into defeat mode. We go into telling ourselves, you know what? It's done. I've already failed. I just got to get through this, but you know, ugh. and then as you're going through it, you keep remembering those exam questions. Like if only I would have known those questions. And so what you're doing is you're ruminating over what didn't go how you wanted it, but you're also sabotaging the rest of your exam because you're 
focus isn't on that. You're not tapping into what you really know and the information that will help you succeed. You're focusing on what has gone wrong or not to what you expected. But if you can come up with a plan for that, so if you come up with a a plan for, okay, what am I gonna do if I get a question that's totally out of left field and I have no idea what it's asking me? What's gonna be my action steps? What am I gonna do if I get a really long calculation question and it's gonna take me like 15 minutes to do all these calcs? What am I gonna do? And so when that does happen, you already know what your action steps are going to be. Now, I talk a lot about this. This is a lot of what we go into inside Mind Over ARE, which is my group coaching program. And we talk all about the different strategies, action steps, what to do during the exam, before the exam, after the exam, because all of this really helps you stay consistent, stay motivated, and tap into what you really know versus letting the fear overwhelm you and sabotage you. So if you are interested in that, we're in group right now. Uh, We only have a group open every quarter. So if you are interested in that, I'll leave a link below so that you can get on the wait list. And yeah, if this is stuff that you want to dive in even deeper and work with me directly, love to have you. Okay, let's continue. Let's talk about ways to overcome when you have failed an exam. So my favorite kind of term that I've heard recently that I love, and I got it from Tiffany Rowe, who's a therapist, and she's awesome. We I went on, on a retreat with her about a year ago, and her tagline is feel, deal, heal. And I love this because it's so simple, but it's so true, and it's so many people are not doing it. So when we have something that happens that we don't love, like say a failed exam, it's so easy to push it away or move on or not tell anybody or just totally put the exams out of our mind because we don't want to face that again. And so what that does is it buries it. So it's always a little bit under there, which now we associate our exams with this experience that we've had, right? Life is all about our perception and reality is our perception. And most time our perception or our expectations of what's going to happen is influenced by our past experiences. And so when we have a past experience that's negative, then we're going to to either want to avoid or prevent or disregard so that we don't experience that same unwanted experience again. So it's just like, you know, say you tried something that you didn't like as a kid. Say you ate cilantro and you hated cilantro and it tasted gross and it tasted soapy and you didn't want it in your mouth anymore. Now our perception of reality is that cilantro is gross and we want to not experience that again. And so we are going to avoid having cilantro. And it is our, this is like the most random. By the way, I come up with all these things very random off the top of my head. So sometimes they're a little out there and just go with me. So basically we're going to avoid that, right? We're not going to want to experience that again. And our reality is now influenced by that past experience when we were five or whatever. So if you don't properly move through the healing of that experience and really understand it and understand what it means of that failed exam, then your brain is going to work real hard to avoid going through that again. And how does that happen? Through procrastination, through not doing it at all, through anxiety, through telling ourselves that we're not ready, constantly rescheduling. Our brain and our ego works really hard to protect ourselves from unwanted experiences. And so if we just associate these exams with that unwanted experience, then we're not going to stay consistent and we're not going to get in there and pass. So what we do is we feel, we feel the emotions. We take time to process them and we don't dwell on them for too long, but we make sure that we do feel them. And when you feel them and you process them and you start to understand them, then you can start healing them. Because once you release that initial built up of energy and emotions, you can start seeing it from a more logical perspective and it starts taking a lot of that emotion out, which then allows you to see the experience more clearly in order to come up with the steps that are needed for the next 
next steps in order to take and pass the exam. So you have to feel the emotions in order to deal with the emotions. You feel it, you go through it, you don't dwell on it for too long, but you feel it in order to deal with it. And when you're dealing with it, the goal is to really feel those emotions and work through them so that they're not so overwhelmingly strong. So you can start seeing the whole experience with a clearer understanding in order to know what steps are needed to move forward. When we feel it, then now we can deal with it and then we can heal from it. And so once we deal with it, now we can heal from it. We can look at it more objectively. We can release a lot of that energy that it's placed on us and then we can heal it and then we can move on and we can take our exam with a clearer energy. Okay, so now you've healed from it. Now what you can do is you can figure out what that failed exam means. We've gone through the emotions. Now how do we actually change or analyze the information so that we don't deal with that again? Now again, these exams have a 55% pass rate. I'm not saying that you're not going to fail again. You might, it might happen. You might fail an exam multiple times, but when you have the right systems in place, you can stay more consistent and you can look at the failed exam for what it is rather than identifying as a failure. So let's talk about that for a second. What is a failed exam? A failed exam is literally just data. So what do I mean by that? A failed exam is literally just data telling you what you need to know. It's telling you where you need to improve in your studying. It's literally just numbers and information to tell you what you need to focus on. When I failed my exams, I felt very overwhelmed. But when I looked at what that information was telling me I was not proficient enough in certain areas and I went back and I started to study those areas I thought oh yeah I don't really have a deep understanding of this and so really that failed exam was literally just data telling me what I needed to understand more and I am such a better architect now because of it because the data told me what I still needed to improve on so when we get a failed exam we have to stop turning that into an identity we have to stop taking that in as I failed because I'm a failure or because I'm not meant to do this. No, the exam was not passed because the data was not proficient enough. The information that went in was not there yet. So what do I need to do? I need to look at the information. I need to look at the data to tell me what steps to make to move forward. And I get it. Sometimes these exams can feel really unfair. Sometimes you spend months studying for an exam and you get in there and you're like, what are they trying to sabotage? me. This information is totally out of left field. It's stupid. I hate it. But that's not the way to pass. Dwelling on that information is not the way to pass. The way to pass is just use the data, figure out what it's telling us, and then move forward. Now, there's tons of other aspects like figuring out what your best personality is for studying. This is a huge game changer because what works for some people doesn't work for other people. And so understanding yourself can make a big difference. Now, I go deep into this inside Mind Over ARE, but I also have a free quiz that I offer called the ARE personality type and you can go in there it's like 60 seconds not even take this quiz find out what the best personality style is for you for studying so that you can optimize your studying so I'll leave a link here so that you can go take that quiz I also have a study note workshop that I do that really teaches you how to optimize your note-taking strategies based on this personality and so this is a huge game changer too because reading a textbook front to back and doing flashcards doesn't work for everybody and it's not the way everybody should study. So go take that quiz so that you can find out what works best for you because that can be a game changer too. So what do I mean by this? We're analyzing the data and then we're figuring out what worked and what didn't. What type of study methods worked for you in the beginning but what didn't? And if you're just doing the same thing over and over, you have to understand that that's not the way to create change. We have to change in order to create change. So if you are failing one exam over and over, you've got to look at that. And it's not just the study content. Yeah, maybe it is the resources 
you're studying, but it could be also the way you're studying. Maybe there's not an accountability aspect that you need. And so you want to join a group program where you can study with others like Mind Over ARE. And then you have that accountability. You have other outside perspectives. And that goes into your personality too, because a lot of us learn well when we are explaining things or we're talking out loud or we're in discussions with others. But the majority of people who are going through these exams are doing it by themselves without anyone else near them who understand what they're going for through. When you don't understand what they're going through, it's not like they're going to be sitting and having discussions with you, right? So finding a community where you can collaborate and have open discussions and actually speak out loud because that can rewire our brain and help us. That is huge too. So if you keep failing and you've been studying by yourself over and over and you don't want to look outside of that, stop doing that. Stop doing that and instead start finding a community where you can do it different. Finding additional resources is great, but also make sure that it's not just, oh, I need this. Oh, they did that. Oh, I need this. This is the only way I can study is watching these videos or reading this textbook is not always the way to do it. So that is my tips for you. Now, It can be really easy to feel unmotivated to study after you have failed an exam. And so this is one of the reasons I create the ultimate study plan. And this is broken down for each exam into six week increments. So each exam, I provide a week by week study plan so that you can know exactly what to study and when to study it. And I have had people who have been like, I have these resources, but just sitting down and having someone say, this is the chapter you need to read this week, it's that accountability and the validation that, okay, this is going to help move me forward and this is going to help me pass. So the ultimate study plan, yes, it is a comprehensive week by week study plan to tell you what to study, when to study it, all that good stuff. But I also giving you a ton of information on how to optimize your studying so that you're not spending your entire life doing it so that you don't burn out because it's really easy to go in there and fail and be like, there's no way in hell I want want to spend my whole life studying again for this exam and put my friends on hold and put my life on hold and I can't go to brunch on Sunday because I have to study for these exams and there's so much guilt that sits in there because it's like I want to go to this brunch but I have to stay home and study. But if I do that and I stay home and study, it's gonna be ineffective because the whole time I'm gonna be thinking I should be doing this brunch and then I'm gonna spiral and then it's not even gonna work and then I should have just gone to the brunch. (laughs) Or I should go to the brunch, but then I'm gonna whole time thinking like, oh my gosh, I should be studying right now. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember the last time I went to brunch. (laughs) But that is a common feeling, whether it's brunch or whether it's getting together with friends or whether it's going on a date or anything like that. And so there's ways to, yeah, you can study and pass your exam in six weeks and have a life. And that's exactly what I teach you how to do. Here's the thing. You failed an exam. What are you going to do? You're going to feel those emotions and you're going to feel bad, right? That just sucks. That sucks. It sucks. Not fun. But then what are you going to do? You're going to deal with it. You're going to create a plan. Okay. All right. That sucks. And I'm not saying this has to happen in one day. Take a week. Feel it. Damn it. That sucks that I just failed. Now I have to do it again. How am I going to deal with this? All right. What's the data telling me? What's my score report telling me? My data is telling me that I'm not proficient enough in this area and this area. Doesn't mean I'm a failure. Whatever. It's just data. It's just numbers. It's just information. Okay. All right. What do I need to do to get more proficient in those areas? Also, I'm going to take a quiz to tell me how should I be studying? Because if the data is telling me that I need to be better in my calculations, but I'm actually like an audible learner or, you know, it's better for me to have a conversation, I'm not just going to go read a bunch of calculations because that will not work. So I'm going to be more efficient with my studying, but I'm going to create a plan and that's going to help me deal with it. And so I'm going to heal from it because now I'm going to go into my exam knowing that I looked at the data and I came up with a super effective plan that I know is gonna be the best that I can do and I'm gonna get in there and do it. And if I fail again, it doesn't mean I didn't try my best. It means that the data isn't quite proficient enough and that there's a likely chance of failing anyways. And so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna feel that feeling again and then I'm gonna deal with it. I'm gonna create a new plan or I'm gonna see what worked really well with that old plan or what didn't work quite well. What areas of my study sessions didn't work? What was I not able to stay consistent with? Okay, change up the plan a little bit. I'm going to heal from it and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to take it again. Here's the thing. You can take these exams over and over. Yeah, there's certain parameters for like when you can take them, but 
you fail that exam, it's not a one time only chance. You can go in there and you can take it again and you can feel good about it. Also, so I was not gonna talk about this at all, but I just wanna say that if you fail an exam, don't feel like you have to leapfrog to another exam. I see people a lot of times fail an exam, so they leapfrog to another exam and then they fail that exam. So they leapfrog to another exam, fail that exam. And pretty soon they've taken every single exam once and they haven't gotten any sort of celebration of success. And it's really important for our brains to get little wins and little successes. And so when we can stick and focus on one exam, even if you're burned out by that exam, I get it. But try to stick with that one exam or the exam that complements that exam. Um, I think that I have other videos and also my 31 best tips for the AREs. I'll leave a link here. You can download a whole PDF. It's like a little ebook that gives you recommendations on what exams to take and which ones to kind of pair with the other one. So I'll leave a link for that too. But you can take the same exam or take the one that pairs with it, but don't leapfrog all over the place. Wait until you can get that success. Now, if that means like five years and you're still not passing one or two of those exams, which that will not be the case because with this proper plan, with feeling and healing it, you are gonna pass. Like there's no way. Also with the ultimate study plan, you will create consistency. There's no freaking way that you will not pass consistently and get in there and take these exams. And if you are taking five years, get inside Mind Over ARE, please. I was gonna say, girl, <laughs> boy, person, get inside Mind Over ARE because if it is taking you five years and you are failing over and over, please let me help you because I see people who have been failing over and over for years come inside the program, take back-to-back -back exams and pass. So I don't want that to be you. Don't take five years with multiple fails and multiple procrastinations. You don't need that to happen. You can do this. You literally could be done next year, 2024. You could be done with your exams. So make sure you're feeling those emotions. You're going through it. You're creating a plan. You're healing from it. You're making sure you have the right systems. You are reading the data for what it is. You're healing and then you're taking these exams. You're passing and before you know it, you will see that last likely pass over the screen and you'll be done. I promise you, you got this. All right, there's my spiel. I think I had some notes. I went way off my notes. I don't even think I took my notes. I don't think I, I think I read one bullet point from my notes, but that is how I feel so strongly about these exams and failing these exams. And you got this. It's not an easy path. It's not that fun. Honestly, going through these exams is not fun, yet it will teach you some of the best lessons of your entire life, not only for our profession and like understanding how to detail properly and save lives and prevent destruction, but it will also teach you about yourself and how you can handle failure and how you can do hard things. And you're going to feel like such a badass once you are finished with these and you're a licensed architect. I promise you. Okay. That is it. Thank you so much for sticking with me till the end and hanging out with me. Go check out some of my other videos. I'm going to leave my ARE playlist right here so that you can go through it and take a deep dive into any other episodes that you have missed. And don't forget to subscribe, turn on that bell. So every Tuesday when we come out with a new episode, you get alerted. I'm always giving you some top tips, tricks. My dog is now behind me rolling around because she's so excited. <laughs> so I think that's my cue to go and I hope you have a beautiful day. I'll see you next week. Leave a comment below to tell me what was your biggest takeaway from this. If there was any sort of like breakthrough that kind of shifted your perspective into a new motivation or new reality, leave me a comment below. Love connecting with you. If you are over listening on the podcast, jump over to YouTube and just leave a comment there. You can also come over to Instagram, hang out with me there. Okay, that is all. Have a wonderful day. Bye.